during a most successful season, culminating in an amazing NCAA semifinals run in 2002. Preseason prognosticators were ranking the Wildcats near the middle of the pack. After all, how do you replace one of the most prolific passers in Villanova history without missing a beat? Who would be the players to step up in 2003? After all, there was no Brian Finneran, who helped lead the Wildcats to an undefeated season in 1997. And more recently, the Cats could count on Brian Westbrook, who's now thriving in the NFL with the Philadelphia Eagles. Players did emerge in 2003, again keeping the Cats in the national spotlight, providing many exciting and memorable moments. But these football Wildcats know they have some unfinished business for 2004. The 2003 season opened for the Wildcats under the lights at Villanova Stadium versus the Hampton Pirates. Ranked 11, Villanova showed it still had a potent offense as well as a suffocating defense. The Wildcats struck quickly, scoring two touchdowns in the first quarter. In his first collegiate start, sophomore quarterback Joe Casamento led his team on an 11-play, 74-yard opening drive, resulting in a one-yard touchdown run on a quarterback sneak. Another sophomore, running back Mo Gibson, scampered 58 yards to put the Cats up by 14. In the second quarter, Casamento threw for two more scores. The first, a 34-yard strike to junior wide receiver Noble Champion. And then for 18 yards to sophomore wideout J.J. Outlaw. The offense added another score early in the third quarter, driving 50 yards on eight plays. Casamento hit junior fullback Phil DiGiacomo with a nine-yard pass to stretch the Villanova lead to 34 to nothing. Joe Casamento had an impressive start, completing 24 of 30 passes for 252 yards and three touchdowns. For his efforts, he earned Atlantic 10 Offensive Player of the Week honors. Running back Mo Gibson had a big day as well, rushing for a career-best 129 yards on only 13 carries and a touchdown. Phil DiGiacomo set career highs for catches and receiving yards, and Noble Champin caught six passes for 77 yards. J.J. Outlaw registered 178 all-purpose yards as the Villanova offense recorded 519 yards of total offense in the game, with 234 on the ground and 285 coming in the air. The dominant Villanova defense held Hampton to just 132 yards of total offense, including just 12 yards passing. Sophomore linebacker Brian Hulia posted 12 and a half tackles in the game to lead the defense that sacked the Pirate quarterback six times. Villanova were then guests of a 1A opponent as the Temple Owls opened their new home at the Lincoln Financial Field. Over 30,000 fans attended, many the Wildcat faithful. While Villanova outgained the Owls in the first half with a series of misdirection and play-action calls, the offense was unable to get into the end zone. Trailing 7-0 early in the third quarter, Villanova recovered a fumble deep in Temple territory. Casamento quickly hit junior Terry Butler for 21 yards, setting up a two-yard TD pass to Phil DiGiacomo to tie the score. The Owls took a short-lived lead before Adam James hit field goals of 20 and 31 yards to take a 13-10 lead before Temple forced overtime in the closing seconds. Casamento gave the Wildcats the lead in the first overtime with a three-yard touchdown pass to Champion. Temple responded with a TD of their own to force a second overtime. Villanova's defense stopped any Temple chance to get in the end zone, and an attempt at a 47-yard field goal came up short. With the game on the line, Adam James was perfect from 37 yards, setting off quite a celebration.
It was Villanova's second straight win over 1A opponents. Last season, the Wildcats opened up with a stunning 37-19 victory over the Rutgers Scarlet Knights. And I'll tell you what, you know, when it's all said and done, we are what I said we were when we came into this game. A great, a great team. So, you know. For the second consecutive week, Villanova was honored by the A-10 for their efforts. Joe Casamento was again named Co-Offensive Player of the Week. He was exceptional in his second start, completing 27 of 36 passes for 336 yards and two touchdowns. Freshman safety Alan Backus earned Rookie of the Week honors. Leading the team in tackles from the strong safety position, Backus tallied 11 total stops, six unassisted, and one for a loss. Kicking hero Adam James was recognized as Special Teams Player of the Week for his perfect effort, going three for three in field goals, including the game winner. Last night, his leg blew up. Okay, his leg was bleeding. He had a muscle pull. They gave him whatever they gave him, magic pills or something. <laughs> the Wildcats were off to a 2-0 start and were ready to begin their conference schedule. <laughs> At New Hampshire, the Wildcats wasted no time getting on the scoreboard. Mo Gibson returned the opening kickoff 90 yards for a touchdown. It was another impressive showing for the Cat offense as well. Joe Casamento threw for three touchdowns and ran for another. Mo Gibson also rushed for two scores. Casamento recorded 245 yards through the air and another 36 on the ground. He threw TD strikes to Noble Champion, Matt Chilla, and John Deeser before Mo Gibson's 42-yard run capped the scoring in the fourth quarter. Gibson's three-touchdown day represented a career high. He finished with 100 yards rushing on 11 carries. Mo Gibson continued the streak of A-10 honors as he was named the conference special teams player of the week for his kickoff return, the second of his career. Gibson returned a kick 96 yards for a touchdown in last year's NCAA playoffs. Touchdown. Returning home, the number five Wildcats got set to battle fourth ranked undefeated Northeastern. The defenses dominated the first quarter. The Huskies seemed to be driving for the game's first score with the ball on the Wildcat eight yard line. But Northeastern fumbled on the four, giving the Cats the ball deep in their own territory. Behind the running of Terry Butler and Mo Gibson, Villanova was able to drive 96 yards on nine plays. Butler opened up the scoring with a 10-yard touchdown run. The game appeared to be headed into the half, tied at 7-7. The Cats had a third and 12 from the Northeastern 39 with just six seconds left before the half. With time for just one play, Casamento dropped back and put up a Hail Mary towards the end zone. The ball glanced off a Husky defensive back at the goal line and was tipped up by Terry Butler before wide receiver Curtis Waltman caught the ball in the end zone for the score. Villanova went into the half with a momentum building 14-7 lead. With the Huskies driving in the third quarter, the stingy Wildcat D held strong. The Cats offense picked up where they left off, driving 66 yards on nine plays capped by a nine-yard Butler TD run. In the fourth, Casamento took off on his way to a 36-yard scoring run. 
giving the Cats a commanding 28-7 lead. Both Butler and Gibson surpassed the 100-yard rushing mark. It was the first time Villanova had two 100-yard rushers in one game since 1988. Butler finished with 104 yards on 19 carries and two touchdowns, while Gibson ran for 107 on 21 carries. The Wildcats had an outstanding defensive effort, holding Northeastern to just 247 total yards. Mike Tassay and Raymond Ventrone led the charge, each tallying seven tackles and one sack apiece. The following week, on a rainy night at Villanova Stadium, the Wildcats improved to 5-0 for the first time since 1997. In a 38-14 victory over conference foe James Madison, Joe Casamento again led the charge completing 22 of 35 passes for 245 yards and two scores. It was only three to nothing going into the half. On a third and 10, Casamento found John Deeser sweeping down the sideline for a 34-yard gain. With three seconds left in the half, the field goal unit was sent out to finish the drive. But after a timeout, head coach Andy Talley elected to go for the score. Terry Butler came through on a second effort, and the Cats never looked back. The Wildcat O took over in the second half. Villanova needed just four plays to take a commanding 17 to nothing lead. Casamento found J.J. Outlaw for a 19-yard gain to open the drop, setting up Noble Chapman for the 18-yard score. Later, Casamento struck again, hitting Outlaw for a 26-yard TD. The key play on the drive was a 20-yard completion to Champin on a third and six. Villanova's defense put the exclamation mark on this victory. Defensive end Terrence Taylor intercepted a pass at the JMU 24 and took it in to seal the deal. The Wildcats forced four James Madison turnovers on the night. Raymond Ventrone and Alan Backus led the Villanova attack with six solo tackles apiece. For his efforts, which included a fumble recovery, junior free safety Ben Thone was named the Atlantic 10 Defensive Player of the Week. Remaining undefeated would become a little tougher, as the Wildcats would need a dramatic fourth quarter drive to overcome Rhode Island in South Kingston. Trailing 17 to 14, Villanova faced a fourth and 17 before Casamento found Terry Butler for a 23-yard completion. He followed that with a 32-yard completion to Deeser, putting the Cat offense on the Rhode Island two-yard line. Casamento would take it in with 20 seconds left to play, giving the Wildcats a remarkable comeback victory, lifting the team to 6-0 and pushing them to a number two national ranking. Returning to Villanova Stadium, it was a battle of two undefeated as the number two Wildcats would face off against the number five Minutemen from UMass in front of a sellout front. Down 10 to nothing late in the first half, the Cats were able to mount some more last second heroics. With just nine seconds left before intermission, Casamento was able to get a pass to John Deeser for a touchdown. On the day, Deezer had a career-high eight receptions for 129 yards. An eight-play, 54-yard drive, culminating with Terry Butler going in for a two-yard score, gave the Cats a 14-13 lead with just over six minutes to go. But a fumbled snap taken in for a score enabled the Minutemen to regain the lead. A final drive stalled, and Villanova suffered its first loss of the 2003 season. Traveling the next week to Richmond, a supernova aerial attack buried the Spiders. Freshman quarterback Marvin Burrows, filling in for the injured Casamento, threw five TD passes and was a perfect 8-for-8 eight eight with 158 yards in the second half. 
Villanova scores came on drives of a minute and nine seconds, 305, 106, 329, 52, and 127. Burroughs finished the game 15 of 19 for 245 yards in his first start for the Wildcats. Late season trips to New York and Maine found the Cats coming up a few points short. A gutsy performance versus the Delaware Blue Hens in the season finale at a sold-out Villanova Stadium found the teams tied at three going into halftime. Late in the fourth quarter, Terry Butler put Villanova ahead on a seven-yard score, his second touchdown of the afternoon. After Delaware was able to respond with a score of their own, Villanova had a final opportunity with 125 left and the ball at the VU 35-yard line. The Cats were able to drive into Blue Hen territory, but the effort again fell short. When the Atlantic 10 released its all-conference team, Villanova led the way with 12 selections, placing six Wildcats on the first team. A pair of seniors, offensive lineman Mike Finn and tight end Matt Chilla, were named to the offensive first team. Finn started and played in every game for the Cats, while Chilla's season was shortened due to injury. He still managed 34 catches for 383 yards and three touchdowns. Joining them on the first team was sophomore wide receiver J.J. Outlaw, who had a breakout season for Villanova. Outlaw recorded team highs in receptions and receiving yards to go along with his two touchdowns. Outlaw also led the team in punt return and kick return yards. Overall, he finished second in the conference in all-purpose yards. The Atlantic 10's number one defensive unit also sent three players to the all-conference team. On the defensive first team were sophomore defensive lineman Darrell Adams, sophomore linebacker Brian Julia, and junior defensive back Raymond Ventrone. Julia led the conference in solo tackles with 101 while Ventrone finished 11th with 68. Adams registered three and a half sacks on the season. Also from the defense, junior Jameel Butler and senior defensive back Clarence Curry were selected to the second team. Junior lineman Terrence Taylor was chosen to the third team. Rounding out the Wildcats selections was a trio of offensive third team honorees. Junior running back Terry Butler, sophomore offensive lineman Jason Sachs, and sophomore return specialist Mo Gibson all received conference accolades. In addition, Matt Chilla and Clarence Curry were selected as two of 50 players to participate in the inaugural Division I-AA College Football All-Star Game. Ten Villanova football student-athletes were honored by the Atlantic Tech. The honor was the second of the season for Raymond Ventrone and Michael Finn, who were recognized as District 2 Academic All-Americans. Joining them were kickers Noah Hoffman and Adam James, linemen Mike Roseman and Jason Sachs, and tight end Anthony Rutt. On the defensive squad, Carmen DeFrancesco, Brian Julia, and Dan Silva were also honored for their achievements. It's a story to be continued. A potent offense and a suffocating defense will again be the main ingredient for Coach Andy Talley and his players. There will be some high expectations for the Cats who will need to take care of that unfinished business in 2004.